Floyd Models kit review time. Today we've got Meng's 135th scale T10 uh, Russian heavy tank. Absolute beast of a thing. As you can see, nice box art, nice sort of Russian way of doing it and all the rest of it. Kit number is TS18 for Tyrannosaurus uh, 18. Uh, as you can see, very nice things. Talking about clear parts, periscopes, uh, optional equipment, movable torsion suspension, uh, cement-free workable tracks provided. Good, we like those. Crew hatches are movable. Main gun barrel can be elevated and lowered. Precision PE parts included. We like the sound of that. As you can see, lovely looking beast, this tank. Nice to see it in sort of like cl uh, classic Russian markings with the white stripes, okay. And then obviously having a look around at the box. Not much too much going on. Usual things, obviously talking about the tank and all things like that. Now in the box itself, we have absolutely stuffed as you can see this is a good one uh, right we've seen these before they either fill you with dread and terror with these pin system going in but it works that's the weird thing I thought it wasn't gonna work I've used these tracks before but actually they do we'll have a look at those in a moment as you can see this is an absolute stuffed box I felt it with the weight of this box it feels an absolute thing as you can see we've got tons of screws to get through on this and we've got some nice clear parts, some photo etch, the decals. Okay, right the way through this. All right, so if we have a look at the instruction book first. So some nice artwork again on the front, full artwork this time. Working its way through, the usual sort of, you know, Chinese-y, English type thing and everybody else's language down in here, talking about the actual tank itself, uh, the history of it. And then we're straight into it. So usual thing, starting off with the wheels. We've got poly caps as well to hold those on and putting all the actual system together. Working on the lower hull, obviously putting in all these different bits down in there. Absolute loads of it going in, going in the chassis. Uh, all the sort of running gear, the various bits and pieces. And then going along, putting in, as we say, this bar system going in with the torsion bars going through into these boxes, which are fully movable. We've seen them on other kits actually does work amazingly okay and then straight in with the actual drive sprockets things like that they're going in there and then this gear so this is this system we'll have a look i'll show you in a moment we have used it it does work ish it's just it it's scary to use it's one of those things where you use it and you think it won't work it's too fragile it's going to break but actually it does work which is quite the amazing thing about it uh, but anyway, putting in all the gear, if you're going to the actual uh, track system, this is if you're going to do it now. Obviously, you're not. You're going to do it at the very end, all right? But you can put this together. But this pin system, as I say, it's a little bit weird, but it does work, all right? Then we've got the actual rear plate going on there. So we've got the hull assembly, uh, some of the parts going down there, the fuel tank carrier, the gun actual holder, uh, and everything else. And then all the bits and pieces, as you can imagine, going all over your tank, uh, all of the headlights, things like that, the grill system, engine covers, as it all fits in, which sort of goes on and on and on and on with armor, which is what gives you all that fantastic detail. The metal parts, which we can look at now, we can do it all in one. So this is the metal grill system it's talking about here. It's that usual, it, it's, it feels like thick, um, brass sort of you know on here but it's a little bit thicker than your normal sort of um sort of eddard stuff if you like and things like that but generally it's quite good it's not see-through it's like a, a checker plate on top but it seems to work some nice stuff there okay so that's going to be going in down there we've got a log to go on the side okay fuel tanks going in the storage bins going in and then it's working up actually on the turret itself so loads of items going to be going all over this it's quite nice that we've actually got lots of sort of aftermarket type bits in here so we've got canvas rolls uh the metal straps we saw that over on the photo etch parts a minute ago things like that they're all going down so some nice stowage items as well and then obviously we're working our way onto the actual uh, top turret as well, putting in the collar ring, the actual gun system itself. Obviously there's no internals on this one whatsoever. The hatch is looking very nicely detailed to work our way through and the gun system itself. So we've got the coaxial type guns uh, and then obviously just the top gun itself. Okay, main gun system going together and being fitted okay and then obviously the turret commander's periscope okay and then obviously you've got the loader's hatch with the gun and then obviously installing it all right and then we've got some of the markings which are pretty straightforward as we know on this particular one there isn't much to it it's just going to be green all over so pretty standard and that's where your weathering comes in because you can really bring it to life so decals themselves not a lot of point getting them quickly out of the bag really i think we're okay with all of those generally pretty nice they go down very well um, I'll tell you what, we'll do it first, get it out of the way, we've got tons of it. 
I'm not going to get it out because we've looked at it before. This is all of the individual track link system as it goes together. As you can see, we've got what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws of track. Yes, fun for the whole family for an evening. Okay, this is the system where it locks together. So this is the plastic. So you're actually going to put it down. You sit them in there individually. Okay, then you come along with your pins, which this is all your pins. These are on the sprues as well. So you just pull them off the screw. Each side they go in, clip this down, push it in, it locks it together, and amazingly, it works. Don't ask me now, I think there's fairy dust involved with that one, because when I did it, I thought this is never gonna work, it's gonna be too weak, it's gonna be rubbish. Actually, it does work, okay? Have a quick look at the clear parts, you see them in there, as we know it's armor, so you're not too worried about it. Various ways we've looked at in the past when I did things like the um, Bradley, you can do uh, mask oil on the inside, because it that glass tint and looking like armor glass. Okay, so looking at some of the parts, I have to be careful here because this isn't my kit, if I'm honest. This is one of the kit card kits. Who's the lucky recipient? Okay, so we have a snake of polycaps, which is fair enough. Okay, and we'll start with the lower hull. Actually, some nice texture. Eh? If you can catch that in the light, it's actually got that sort of cast look to it right the way over, which absolutely beautifully done. Very nicely done that, there's some nice detail down here. Got the escape hatches on the bottom, where these torsion bars are gonna go in, and then from the inside, obviously, locking those in. The other thing as well, it's very solid. There's no real play in any of this plastic. It feels what it is, which is pretty solid stuff. The top one again, some very nice, I do like this cast detail that this has got on this one. It really has a very nice scale look to it. It doesn't look like it's overdone like on certain Academy kits, things like that. It looks like it's in scale and part of it. And where it joins other things, it just works. It works really, really well. All of the details down here, all of the bolts, things like that, they're extremely crisp, very, very sharp, very well molded, okay? Considering this is obviously popped out of one unit, it works very, very well. And generally just looking around and on it, and hopefully you can see on some of the close-up work as well that, you know, it is very nicely done. Very nicely detailed. Probably one of the nicest holes I've seen in a while. Okay, what are we gonna work through here? Uh, let's do the top one, then we'll work our way through all the little bits afterwards. I'm get hold of it. Come on. We're gonna need a new blade in me knife. Invest in one. Again, carrying on with that cast theme, you can see on the top here, it's very nicely done. Some beautiful texture work into those. I really do like that. That actually is very, very nice. I thought it had a sort of look of release film. It looks very, very shiny, but I don't know. You might want to give this one a wash just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's just so it's a fine detail and so very nicely done that you can't actually see. Lower collar, again, very nicely done. Some very good detail in there. And you can see down here with the mantle, things like that. Looking good all the details, no sign of flash, no sign of any sort of mist molds or anything else like that, very clean. All the ejector pins as well feel level. There's, they are not actually sunk, they're just there, if you know what I mean. So if you did want to whip them out, not that you have to, because they're not in the way, but they're never gonna be a problem, okay? That's that one, and in here. So down in here, we can see some more of the other details. So you've got your split barrel, which is a bit of a pain. You might want to go down the metal route afterwards. But generally looking at some of these, this is beautifully detailed, They're very crisply molded. This stuff down here is absolutely beautifully done. It's tiny little stuff, but there's not a hint of flash. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of flash here. Look, I'm gonna get rid of it because it bugs me. Okay, but generally no problem with this at all. Got a tiny little bit of flash on there. I think you can forgive it because these are very fine, very small pieces and they're beautifully done. The roll as well, this is that canvas uh, on the top, which is a two part and then obviously it molds down to the back of the turret. Very nicely done. The grills, all the bits and pieces, looking very, very nice. I can't see any problem with that. Even the gun down here, which has actually got a small hollow uh, in it as well. So that's actually gonna give it a, a very nice look. Okay. Thing with the main kits, they are good. You know, this is the trouble. It's very hard to find a fault with any of them. Again, carrying on down here, extremely crisp, very nicely done. This detail down here is amazingly sharp. That is absolutely exquisite. That is some of the tidiest small injection molding I think I've seen. That is absolutely beautifully done. And it does look oily. It looks quite greasy, but actually it's not. That's the weird thing about it. It may be, you know, a new way of doing it, but they're definitely polishing the moulds with something else these days, because these are looking very nice. 
Generally, as you can see, everything that needs texture's got it, but where it doesn't, it has a very nice look to it. It's almost like squeaky, it's so well done. Very nice on all of those parts, no problem with those at all. And another biggie down here. So down here we've got a chain. A lot of the plating, some of the work. As you can see, we've got a little bit of the tow chain down here or tow cable. Generally working our way down. Again, this guy down here with this sort of texturing on the top is very nicely done. All the rest of it, the grills, these louver doors, extremely sharp. You catch them at a different angle, as you can see. It goes from being, you know, they are very nicely done. No flash or anything in between them. The gear, handles, headlight things, very nicely done, all of that. Very clean, crisp mold which is what we're getting used to really with men. So when they don't, we're gonna cry. Okay, so I'm gathering to be a, yeah, it's a double. Okay, so down here we've got the torsion bars for the suspension system. Very nicely done, very nicely laid out. And again, all the small parts, extremely crisp, sharp molding. No problem with any of those. That looks really, really nice. I say, I can't find a fault with this kit. It's beautiful, beautiful kit. Very nicely done. This is one of those, I should have got one. <laughs> okay. Look to sell the stash is too big, Mr. Flory. Right. Okay. Oh look, the log. Which is a one piece mould. The log is one piece. Okay. Looking down. Again, it looks like it's oily. In fact it may be, I don't know. I can't not feeling anything from it, but there we go. It does look a little bit oily. This does definitely. Okay, so it might be worth giving this a wash. Actually, there we go. It has. It's got a little bit of release film on this. And I've just found a puddle of it. What can happen is, which isn't a bad thing, when it's a very early shot, i.e. the first ones out, they tend to have more release film on them. But look at it this way, you've got the crispest kits there is, and that's probably why it is. Okay, so this one, definitely, you wanna give this entire kit, now I've seen it, a wash before you start. You don't have to, and a lot of the times you can get away with it, but sometimes it's worth it, because later on things can come back and bite you, like your primer not going down, and certainly paints. So it is worth with this kit, I would get it in, submerge it, soapy water. If you have got a soft brush, I've got a couple of really big soft brushes, just give it a, a go over the top, soapy water, rinse them off under the old cold tap and then leave them to dry uh, on the stand. Don't do the pack dry things, I've lost parts doing it that way, but definitely it is well worth doing it on this kit because it is a little bit oily. And on this sprue mainly, I can feel it, got it on my hands, okay? But generally, beautifully done. We're not quite back to the old trumpeter days where as I say, used to have the bag, and no joke, you go like that and you're pull in the corner. Those were good old days, they were. Right, okay, so. Last sprue up, again, for the wheels. Again, I love this texture. You've actually got texture inside the hubs. How well the camera actually picks that up on the close-up. But you've actually got some nice texture in there. It looks like it's cast, which I haven't seen done quite like that before, and it, it gives me that effect of it's right and it's in scale which is a beautiful little touch so there we go that is it so there we go that is another absolute stunner from meng the kit itself is sharp it's crisp beautifully molded some great texturing on this one they say a lot of it is cast on the actual the real thing and it's come across extremely well all too often casting and that look of it just doesn't translate into models and scale models in 135th especially this time they've absolutely got it spot on to me so that is definitely a must-have kit